respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A letter from a father to a son from Ali ibn Abi Talib, the will of Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, to his uh, son, Imam Hassan, peace be upon him. Let it be known to you that the king of health, passing away of time and nearness of death, had made me realize that I should give more thought to my future, the next world, and to my people. Advise them and spend more time in equipping them mentally to face this materialistic world. I felt that my own sons and my near ones have as much right to utilize from my experiences and knowledge all the ups and downs of my life, all the realities and all the truth about life in this world and the hereafter. I decided therefore to spend more time over you to prepare you for your own good. This was neither selflessness nor self-esteem nor mental luxury of giving away pieces of advice but it was the sincere desire of making you see the world as I found it. Look at the realities of life as I looked at them and do the right thing at the right time and at the right place as it should be done which made me write down these advices to you. You will not find them in, you will not find in them anything but truth and realities. My dear son, you are a part of my body and my soul. Whenever I look at you, I feel like as if, if I am looking at myself. If any problem befalls you, if it's like it has befallen me, your death will make me feel as of my own death. Your affairs to me are like my own affairs. Therefore, I committed these pieces of advice to paper. I want you to take care of them, to pay attention, and to guard them very well. I may remain longer in your life, or I may not, but I want these pieces of advice to remain always and at all time with you. My first and foremost advice to you, my son, is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be his obedient servant. Keep his thought always fresh in your mind. Be attached and, and carefully guard the principles of Islam, which, cannot, which connect you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no stronger or no more durable connection than with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Karbala. The will that I just read is the will of Ali ibn Abi Talib, as I mentioned, to one of his, to one of his sons, and as strongly narrated by historians, um, to his son, Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Tonight is the most significant night compared to the other nights across the year. It is the 23rd night of the, of the holy month of Ramadan. Tonight is the night when the Holy Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tonight is the night when the angel descended on Prophet Muhammad. Tonight is the night which is better and holier than 1000 months. Tonight is the night of Laytul Qadr. So inshallah tonight uh, we will discuss uh, the significance of Laytul Qadr and the connection between uh, such a night and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. But first, let's welcome our very special guest, Sayyid Ja'far al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. How are you? Alhamdulillah. 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 Um, inshallah. There is no better place to be um, on such a night uh, between the two holy shrines of Imam al-Hussein and Imam al-Abbas, peace be upon them. May accept our prayers, inshallah. Inshallah. Because of where we are, inshallah. Inshallah. within the haram of Imam al-Hussein, I will not forget you with some of the dear viewers, inshallah, from Dua, inshallah. inshallah. Um, <laughs> as, you know, narrations by Ahl al-Bayt, uh, Layt al-Qadr, it is very mustahab, it is very good, uh, a good deed to do is uh, to visit the Holy Shrine of Hussain, peace be upon them, and to ask forgiveness for all the believers, all the lovers of Ahl al-Bayt, and even, you know, just everyone ac across the world. But uh, Layat al-Qadr is um, the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which um, the doors of His mercy are open to all the believers who sincerely and faithfully love and obey His commands. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses and explains the significance of this night uh, when we read chapter 97, uh, Surah al-Qadr. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, telling and saying about this verse that it is better and holier than 1,000 month you know for as if someone would worship a thousand month and misses this night as if he didn't worship those those a thousand months um, so why 
is this night so significant? And where does uh, its significance originate from, Sayyidina? Ahsan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlu al-aqdatan min lisani yafqahu wa qawli. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Uh, my dear brother, dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the first verse of this holy chapter, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we have revealed it on the night of Qadr. Uh, there are a couple of beautiful notes to, to mention, uh, um, and because today is indeed Laylatul Qadr, the night of power or destiny as they refer to it. And as they translate it to English, mm -hmm. uh, there are two, uh, a couple of beautiful points uh, in regards uh, with these holy verses in the Holy Quran. <coughs> First of all, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we notice that He is saying that we have revealed it. Some may ask that, well, um, everyone knows and all the historians and all the uh, narrators of hadith and the transmitters of hadith, and all the scholars um, agree on that uh, it refers to the Holy Quran. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the Holy Quran to be revealed uh, in this night, on this night, Laylatul Qadr. So why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, say, uh, Inna anzana al-Qur'ana fi Laylatul Qadr? Scholars say that it is out of glorification and honor for Quran. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, I go and visit a, a, a very well-known uh, scholar, uh, a marja' for instance, um, and I sat with him and then when I go back home, they ask me, where have you been? I, I don't bring up his name because that he is very known and he is well known to everyone. I say that uh, I was with Samahat al Sayyid or Samahat al Shaykh, for example. Uh, and that's out of glorification and, and honor. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, here in this beautiful verse, uh, points at the Holy Quran in a very beautiful way. And also uh, to give it more to give it more honor and glorification. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have revealed it. Inna anzalna fi al Qadr. He didn't say that it was revealed. Uh, on, on, well, he's, he's saying that we revealed it on, on Laylat al Qadr, which gives it more glorification and more honor to the Holy Book. Uh, Another question might be raised, dear brother, that some uh, would say that wasn't the Holy Quran, didn't it start with Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Iqra, Bismi Rabbika al khalaq, wasn't that um, 10 years uh, prior to, to, the, to the Hijrah of the Prophet on the day that uh, the Prophethood was, he was, uh, the Prophet had uh, became a Prophet. And wasn't the last verse uh, that was revealed Ayat al-Indar or Ayat al-Tabliq Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya ayyuha rasul balagh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik The verse that, uh, that clearly and loudly uh, announces Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the successor of the Prophet peace be upon him So uh, how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we have revealed it in Laylat al-Qadr? Uh, scholars uh, go to two different answers uh, to this question uh, and most of them, most of the scholars uh, believe and say that uh, the Quran was revealed on the Prophet, on his heart, to the Prophet twice. Once an overall Qur'an that, uh, that was in the beginning, at uh, some point in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the whole Qur'an to the Prophet so that the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, during the 23 years of a prophethood and of announcing and of uh, uh, during his mission, uh, accomplishing his mission, 
he would have an all uh, um, 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 a general idea of uh, of the Holy Quran and the Ahkam and and uh, what it says and what it contains. And then throughout the 23 years, uh, the verses and the Ahkam and the um, uh, and the requests and orders of the Holy Quran were given in details to the Prophet so that the Prophet would. Um, would give it to, to the nation after that. So they believed that uh, it was revealed in two, uh, two times. Once, um, all, in, uh, all in one, uh, on Laylat al Qadr, and, uh, and Shaheed al Sadr, Radwanullah uh, Ta'ala, um, he has a, um, he gives a beautiful, uh, uh, he gives a beautiful uh, delil. Uh, how do you say that? Evidence. Evidence, ahsant, from the Holy Quran, mm -hmm. saying that because in other verse, ver, in, in another verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, kitabun uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fusilat. That the Holy Quran states here that the uh, that the verses were made strong first, <coughs> and then they were sent or revealed uh, in details to the Prophet. So he refers to this ayah and he takes it as an evidence that the Quran was revealed uh, twice. And another uh, reason uh, and another point, beautiful point that the uh, scholars mention in regards to this topic, uh, they say that the Holy Quran was revealed uh, on the Prophet throughout, and by the way, before I say this, uh, the Holy Quran, our holy book, the Holy Quran, the, the, uh, the, our Prophet's holy book, was the only book that was revealed throughout stages, within a period of time, within 23 years. Mm -hmm. And that was the only holy book, a holy, a holy book that was revealed by Allah uh, this way. The Bible, the Old Testament, uh, the Torah, the New Testament, the, uh, the Bible, uh, and the other holy books that were revealed from Allah to His messengers were uh, all at once. Uh, but our uh, Quran and the Holy Quran was revealed throughout sages. Why? Some people ask. Uh, the most beautiful answer that I have uh, heard uh, so far uh, is that, uh, and also Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the answer in the Holy within the Holy Quran. We get the answer out of the Holy Quran itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here answers كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ The translation of this holy verse is and those, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and those who disbelieve say uh, that why wasn't uh, this book revealed to him all at once? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here answers uh, in the end of this uh, holy verse says that this is for us to that we may strengthen the heart of the Prophet. Yeah. We might strengthen your heart, uh, holy Prophet. Imagine, imagine that the uh, imagine that Jibreel, because when the Prophet uh, used to when Jibreel used to be uh, to come down to the Prophet and, and, and reveal some verses and speak to the Prophet it was comforting for the Holy Prophet mm -hmm. the Prophet would feel comfortable uh, strengthened uh, by by seeing Jibreel and speaking to him and and giving the delivering the, the message uh, from and, and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and I'll give you also an example about that uh, for example, I'm a college student, mm -hmm. so I go overseas to, to do my education, to continue my education. And I am a type that I have a very strong relationship with my mother. And I use, and I'm, I am used to speak to her uh, every day and about everything and, uh, and that. Mm -hmm. So when I am overseas, when I am uh, out there, they give me two options. They say that you either speak to your mom once a week for two hours, every week uh, but it's going to be once a week or they tell me that you will speak, you can speak to your mom every day for 15 or 20 minutes i would definitely prefer to speak with my mom every day for uh, even though it's a short time but because i miss her because i love her because i want her because i want to hear her voice because i want to listen to her 
I would prefer to speak to her every day for a shorter period of time. And this is exactly, uh, or this is, it is an example of, of what I mean and how it was with the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, it was comforting for the Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. Alaihi Wasallam to uh, um, um, uh, he would uh, would feel stronger and more comfortable when, when it would happen. Definitely. And uh, this is reason number one and reason number two mm -hmm. of why the Holy Quran was revealed throughout stages and within stages and within 23 years uh, the other answer the uh, scholars uh, bring up is that this is because the Quran is not a book of entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's not a love story. It's not a novel that I might read uh, prayer to sleep and because I want to go to sleep, I would like to, uh, to read something. And It's a book of revolution. And revolutions take time. They don't occur and happen and affect within a single night mm -hmm. or two. Definitely. They take time. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make, uh, uh, and He did, and the Quran was one of the Holy Prophet's uh, mu'jizat, mm -hmm. uh, miracles. Uh, so, um, um, it was, um, how was it a miracle? Mm -hmm. So many answers, and one of them is that it's a book of revolution. Definitely. He changed, he, uh, I mean, the it's got a way of life in it. It's not only about uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving stories to the Holy mm -hmm. Prophet, and that would be all. Uh, and it needed that time, and it might have even needed longer, uh, because, because uh, even after 23 years mm -hmm. of, of uh, revealing holy verses and speaking to the nation through the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, did it affect people? I mean, we see that the Holy Quran also answers this question mm -hmm. uh, by saying, Bismillah uh, rahim A lot of people went back to, to what they were doing before the Prophet yeah. was, uh, they became so a Prophet. A lot of people uh, became, uh, got misguided. Mm -hmm. uh, right after the Prophet departed us, and right after the, uh, the Prophet passed away. Uh, so even for some people, for a lot of people uh, that were with the Prophet and, 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 and around him, 23 years was not even enough. Not even 23 years was uh, enough for them to, yeah. to change for good. And to so, uh, and this is why uh, this holy book and Islam and the religion of Allah and the faith needed Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihi wa to continue uh, what the Prophet started, mm -hmm. to continue what the Prophet peace be upon him had started, to continue his mission and to be with the people, guiding them and uh, and and shielding them from being misguided. Mm -hmm. And here comes the most significant, uh, significant and important role of Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihi wa Definitely, um, as the viewers uh, may know. Uh, there is a very, very strong connection, according to Amr Sadiq, uh, peace be upon him, in Bahar Anwar. Uh, there's a very strong connection between Ahl al Bayt, peace be upon them, and um, Laylatul Qadr, especially with uh, Fatima al Zahra, alayha, and uh, Imam al Mahdi, the Hajjat Muntadar. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Imam al Sadiq, peace be upon him, states. The person who has fully grasped the deep understanding of Fatima al Zahra, may peace and blessings be upon her, as she ought to be understood, then he has understood and experienced the blessings of Laylatul Qadr. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this night is um, greater than a thousand months, we see on Sadiq saying that uh, the believers who worship in, in this night won't understand or won't benefit from their worship until they understand what Fatima al Zahra is and what uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa states um, whoever angers her angers me and whoever angers me angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we discussed over the past few nights how you know, similar individuals uh, pressed Ali ibn Talib in the Ahlul Bayt but uh, what does Prophet Muhammad and what has Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them uh, narrated regarding uh, 
ليلة القدر. أحسنت. so many dear brothers, so many dear brothers. it is important to know that أهل البيت صلى الله وسلم عليهم there are there are certain points in the religion of Islam that were meant to be hidden from us. some certain details. For example, <coughs> when is Laylatul Qadr? The Prophet in many instances, in many uh, stories, in many um, uh, times, well, was asked وآله, that when is it exactly, he wouldn't, he wouldn't answer to that. Imam Amir Mu'mineen was asked that when is Laylatul Qadr, he would answer that I know but I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, they just say that it's the, the last night <coughs> in Ramadan. It's we one have, of the nights. We have so many different narrations. Yeah. The, it stays. We also have, you know that we have narrations saying that uh, that it might be uh, uh, like a singular days. Ahsan, the third, the fifth, the seventh, mm -hmm. until the end of the month. But the most of narrations, most of narrations in general, they speak about uh, three nights of this holy month, Shahr Ramadan. They speak <coughs> about the 19th and the uh, the night uh, of the 19th and the night of the 21st and the night of the 23rd of this holy month. <coughs> and also most of the narrations, uh, or the narrations, uh, I believe two or three narrations, that the, the scholars depend on uh, to prove that uh, it might be tonight, the night of the uh, the twenty uh, third of the of Ramadan, of Shahr Ramadan. <coughs> this is why they call it Laylat al Qadr al Kubra, Laylat al Qadr al Udma, because mm -hmm. most of people, the, and they all go back to one or two narrations. That are maybe more. I'm, I'm not positive, but they mostly uh, go to Hadith al Arabi, mm -hmm. uh, which states that uh, an Arabi, one of the this, uh, one of the people that used to live in the desert with his family and animals and, and stuff, uh, he came to the Holy Prophet telling him that, uh, Dear Prophet, I cannot come every night uh, during the holy month of Ramadan mm -hmm. or in the, in the, in the uh, uh, single Layal uh, al mm -hmm. uh, I can't come because every time I come I have to uh, take my family be with me because I can't leave them out there in the desert. And I have to bring my, my animals with me. So it's very difficult and I cannot come except for one night. So when would you, uh, when would you uh, tell me to uh, order me, uh, when would be the, the best time for me to come and to be with you during your prayers and do prayers and dua with you? The Prophet whispered something in his ears. He didn't say it out loud. So he thanked the Prophet and left and people saw him later on coming on the, on the eve of to the 23rd. And every year they would see him come on that night. So the, uh, the, the rest of the companions uh, started seeing this Arabi, Juhayna, by the name of Juhayna, mm -hmm. uh, started seeing him every year uh, on this uh, specific eve, the, 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 the evening of the, the night of the 23rd, mm -hmm. the, the, the eve of the 23rd of, of Ramadan. They started seeing him come into to, 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 to the Prophet and doing his prophet. Uh, and because he couldn't come uh, every night, the Prophet whispered, they, they, uh, according to this hadith, they say that, uh, then it's, it's pretty obvious that the Prophet told them that the eve of Qadr, the night of Qadr, is, is on the uh, evening of the 10, 23rd. And as I said also, uh, they asked Imam Amir al Mumin that uh, when, is, when is it? Is it the 19th? Is it the 21st? Is it the 23rd? Mm -hmm. Imam said that I know but I will not tell you. Mm -hmm. What uh, harm would it cause you if you worship Allah three nights? Yeah. This would be usually the overall answer of all the, uh, of Ahlul Bayt, of, uh, all the infallibles. And also Imam al-Baqir, he was uh, also asked that, do you know when is Laylat al-Qad? He said, of course I know. Wednesday is Laqad. Where do you think the angels, who do you think the angels uh, reveal to on that night? They reveal to me. 
because on, uh, the, during the Prophet's time, they used to reveal to the Prophet. Allah uh, uh, To whom they, uh, they are revealed. During the Prophet's time, it was on the Prophet. During Imam Ali's time, it was on Imam Ali. During Imam Hassan's time, uh, Imam, it was uh, on Imam Hassan. And today, of course, they uh, they come to to uh, to Hajjat Allah ala arda. Imam Sahib Sahib al Asr wal Zaman, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alayhi. They go to their master and our master. They go to to our master and their master, and they are revealed on him, uh, giving him all about what was during the last year and what's gonna be uh, during the, the upcoming year. So uh, these are some narrations uh, stating that Ahlul Bayt Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they definitely uh, know when it is but they just wanted it was meant for this uh, Eve uh, to be hidden from us. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants us. He, it's like he, it's like he, um, he is looking for excuse to forgive us. What is tonight? What is so special about this evening? The special about this evening, this evening, is the huge sales that's going on. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is, is gives, uh, reveals, and and passes on and divides his rahmah, his mercy upon upon people in this evening, in this specific evening, uh, more than he does throughout the whole year. Yeah. And our actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the second verse uh, of, of Surah Al-Qadr uh, says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, or uh, from the beginning, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-Qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylat al-Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. And there's also a narration uh, from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, says that there was a man among Bani Israel that uh, that fought again uh, for the, that fought because of the cause uh, of Allah subhanahu wa taala, for the cause of Allah, for the sake of Allah. Uh, he fought the disbelievers for 80 to 80 do, uh, to 80 to 82 years. Mm -hmm. He spent 80, 82 years of, of uh, he spent all of his life mm -hmm. fighting for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and then he was it was he uh, became a Muslim, uh, became a shaheed. So some of the companions said, "Wow, what a, what a great thing he did! What a great reward reward he uh, he received uh, of doing this." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here answers to them that, yeah, that you too can receive the same reward. خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ The prayers, the dua, the prayers, the mercy that we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this evening is خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ is better than a thousand uh, months mm -hmm. which is equal to 80 to 82 uh, years. So uh, it is. It is such a, a glorious evening. It's such a, a such a, a significant evening uh, because of this facts. Mm -hmm. Because of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ascends upon us His mercy on this evening. And they say also, scholars say that uh, any good deed uh, that I that I that I do in this evening on this evening evening, like for example, if I uh, do a nawafil extra prayers. Uh, if I donate money to the to the orphans and to the poor, it is multiplied. It is um, it is it is uh, multiplied by a thousand uh, in this evening. Mm -hmm. So uh, I remind myself, dear brother, and all the dear viewers as well, uh, to take advantage of I'm this sure. of this evening, sure. uh, because because there is also another story of uh, during the time that the Prophet was uh, before his prophethood uh, he went to Ta'if to another, another city and he was there for a while and over there some guy uh, gave him shelter and the Prophet back then wasn't a prophet and, and a well-known prophet that everyone know about and, and, and the, the final messenger of Allah he wasn't known by that mm -hmm. and he was weak uh, back then he wasn't strong 
So this guy sheltered uh, the Prophet for um, uh, many uh, nights, I believe. And then years later, this guy heard that the same guy, that the Prophet uh, that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa Imam sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, that he sheltered years ago, is now has become a, a Prophet. And he is supposed to be the fine, and he is the fine, uh, the final prophet and messenger of Allah. And he has, um, and he um, he has his his nation now, and he has a, a kingdom. So he went to the prophet. He told him that, uh, dear prophet, uh, remember me. Remember that I gave you shelter uh, back then. Mm -hmm. The prophet said, indeed. What can I do for you now? He said that uh, I want you. Uh, to do whatever I request from you, for me. Mm -hmm. The Prophet told him, ask anything you want mm -hmm. and I shall guarantee it for you from Allah. So the guy asked for 200 sheep. So uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, raised his hand and he did the dua and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after maybe a couple of minutes somebody showed up with 250 and some extra mm -hmm. sheaves and gave it to him. So after he left, he was very happy, he took the sheaves, thank you very much, and he left. After he left, the Prophet came to his companions and said that uh, how low his ambitions were. He could have asked, I told him that I will guarantee anything, anything that you would request. I would, he could have requested to be with me, my neighbor in, in, uh, in heavens, at my level. And, I, and I, I, because I told him that I guarantee anything you ask. He could have asked for khayr dunya wal akhira. What is 200 sheep you're asking from, from the Prophet, peace be upon him? Mm -hmm. And the Prophet is giving you guarantee that, uh, that your duas and your prayers should be guaranteed. And we, dear brother, also should not forget that we are asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the Prophet peace be upon him tonight and every night and we raise our hands and do du'as uh, for him and our first du'a uh, um, um, should always be that Allahumma ajil wa yadik al-faraj du'a al-mam al may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of our Savior of, and, 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 and our Shana. Imam salawatu wa sallam Savior of all humanity Ahsan, Ahsan so it is important for us to have high ambitions and we have we take we raise the level of our request tonight from Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala don't worry you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mm. strongest uh, you're asking the creator and you're asking the al uh, ghani al qadir uh, that that um, we, sh we shall not forget the brother and also there is a narration beautiful narration mm -hmm. Uh, from from an Imam uh, Al Baqir Salawat Al as well from Imam Al Baqir Salawat Al mm -hmm. that he said that do prayers to Allah uh, in this evening in this evening using using tongues that you didn't sin Allah with. Mm -hmm. So the people asked them that uh, okay we're not infallible uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we all have done sins so how could we ask Allah something with a, with a tongue that we haven't uh, done a sin, sin with it. He said that you should be clever. And this evening, make agreements with your brothers and neighbors and friends so that they do dua for you and mm -hmm. you do dua for them. In this way, because I haven't sent Allah with your tongue and you haven't sent Allah with my tongue. So if I do prayers yeah, uh, so for you, prayers. Ahsan, exchange prayers, and Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the continue uh, at the end of this hadith is very beautiful. He says that mm -hmm. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, an angel, uh, replies back to you after your prayers for mm -hmm. your brothers and neighbors and, and and family members and and first of all the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says an angel um, um, shouts and says that it is guaranteed for him what you prayed and for you the double of what you asked mm -hmm. for you double of what you asked for uh, for everyone so uh, dear brother uh, and dear viewers uh, do prayers uh, for your for your brothers for your family members sure. for your neighbors don't Especially forget them for you know hasting their appearance and of, of course, uh, because of course. we see i mean 
uh, the world right now is, is, is full of oppression and the best thing to do at the moment and on the on this night especially um, is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to strongly request from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam because I mean as we see right now there are millions if not thousands thousands not millions of pilgrims on um, visiting Oh Hussein peace be upon him and Abu Fadl Abbas inshallah may Allah inshallah inshallah may Allah uh, accept everyone's prayers Allahumma but when speaking about Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman it is very significant uh, to note that uh, Laylat al-Qadr also interconnects with our Sahib uh, has a strong connection with Sahib al-Zaman because uh, according to strong narrations by Ahlul Bayt uh, Laylat al-Qadr is meant in, uh, for people to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as you mentioned it's unknown people just say you know according to narrations and people seeing someone coming <coughs> back on the 23rd night but uh, it's similar to the grave of Fatima to Zahra alayha, which is also hidden and Imam Mahdi Allah his reappearance which is also hidden from our eyes but lives in our hearts insha'Allah um, it's, it's, it's a very significant connection that Imam Sadiq peace be upon him uh, does in Bihar al uh, but uh, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know when we when you learn that Allah revealed the Quran on Prophet Muhammad on such a night um, it's a blessed occasion uh, people should be um, uh, you know rejoicing this night definitely, uh, definitely. but uh, we see um, people are so sad on, on such a night you know worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a saddened heart why is that Sayyidina? I mean why we, we should be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran no, the, the you know appearing and uh, we are happy that Allah subhanahu wa taala has given us such blessings of 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 introducing such an evening to us, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean a, an evening that every single uh, penny that I spend for Allah subhanahu wa taala tonight is is multiplied by a thousand and even more than that. <coughs> so we are happy uh, of that side. And and also we should not forget that we should not forget that the malaika wa ruh that are mentioned in the holy verse uh, that uh, that come down on this evening on this evening uh, evening they all uh, come down to to our master and to their master Imam Sahib uh, al-Zaman and he gets to see he gets to see what we have done in the past year and what's going to happen to us uh, in the upcoming in the upcoming uh, year he sallallahu wa sallam gets to check off uh, our, our actions and our destinies uh, uh, in this evening so the sadness is always the i believe the main reason and this is the same reason reason you see some of the some of the mu'mineen um, kind of sad on Friday in the afternoons because they know that it is supposed to be on, on Friday we are told that it is going to be on a Friday the reappearance of our Savior of our Imam and so every Friday noon that would pass without the appearance of the, of the Imam it means that we're gonna have to wait for another week and we don't know if we're gonna, if we're gonna be alive for, for another week uh, or not so uh, also on this evening, we, uh, when we know that uh, the angels and the Ruh, which is uh, mostly Jibreel uh, السلام, they all come to, to the Imam Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and, and, and they bring uh, what's destined for everyone throughout uh, this year to him. Uh, we wish that we could uh, we could uh, see him. We wish sure. that we could uh, do prayers behind him, sure. with him. We could say Amin to his prayers, Allah sure. And uh, and also and also and because we mentioned the Imam, I would like my dear brother to to recite 
uh, Dua Al Imam Al Hajjah inshallah. on this evening, and inshallah, the thawab of it, the reward of it will be for, for all of us, inshallah, and all the dear viewers. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyik al Hajjah ibn al Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaihi fi hadihi al Sa'a. Wa fi kulli Sa'a. Waliya wa hafiza. Wa qaida wa nasara. Wa dalila wa aina. Hatta tuskinahu ardak tawa. Wa tumatahu fi ha tawila. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل اعملوا فسير الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون uh, work and uh, because Allah سبحانه وتعالى and his prophet and the mu'minun which are the ahl al-bayt which is today our imam sahab al-sahab al-asr wa al-zaman sallallahu alayhi wa sallam imam al-mahdi al-muntadar today it is him uh, that is referred in this holy verse al-mu'minun uh, they see our actions, they see what we have done uh, throughout the year and what's going to happen to us. So inshallah, we ask Allah to, to grant us a, a good year inshallah, in the upcoming year inshallah. Whether we were alive until the upcoming year of Qadr uh, or not. If we are inshallah, we'll have a, we'll have a good life inshallah, inshallah. taking lessons and improving mm -hmm. in, in, this, in this life of ours. And if we were not and if I was not, uh, my dear brother, uh, inshallah, may Allah uh, grant us heavens and paradise, inshallah. Inshallah, grant us his forgiveness. Allahumma amin. And inshallah, if we are alive, Allah, Allah. we can uh, pray behind Sahib al Asr al Zaman, Allah, Allah, uh, you know, in this, in this very inshallah. holy place. Um, thank you very much, Sayyidina. And it's also significant um, that on a night like this, as you mentioned, there's a. We will conclude this uh, episode with this narration. There was one scholar. Um, who used to sit in, in the mosque, I think Kufa or uh, there's the mosque uh, Sardab in, in Najaf uh, Sardab al Ghaiba. Sardab al Ghaiba fi Samarra. Uh, and he used to sit there and um, people used to hear him uh, praying praying for the for the disbelievers. So he they were shocked, They're like uh, Sayyidna or Mawlana, you're, you're praying for the disbelievers and not for the believers. Uh, he said, because the believers are already blessed with the blessings of Islam. Wow. They just have to follow the path. Wow. The path is drawn for them. They just have to walk on it. But the disbelievers um, did not get the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or were not this present. This is the kind of belief and, and ambitions that yeah. we're talking about. So he sits on it al-Qadr praying for the disbelievers. So inshallah, we can um, you know, pray for these believers as well as pray for, Allah pray Allah for Allah our Allah brothers Allah and sisters. Uh, so thank you very much, Sayyidina. Uh, thank you very much, uh, And thank you very much, respected viewers. Um, please do not forget us in your dua. And inshallah, we as well will not forget you when we visit the Holy Shrine of Hussain Abbas and uh, Mama Ali and Najaf. So thank you very much. Uh, if you didn't get the chance to view the episode, you can uh, check out our YouTube channel at Hussain 3 tv uh, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum, Sayyidina. Allah khaliq.